glory to God, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord today. If you will, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter number 10. Romans chapter 10, and I like to read one verse starting out this morning, verse number 11. I'll give you a few moments to find your places in the Word of God. Good to have with us this morning a good number of visitors. God bless you for being here today. And I think some of the visitors come as far out as Oklahoma. Oklahoma. All those from Oklahoma, how about standing up there? Let's see how many come from Oklahoma. Look at there. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Johnny, do we have a prize for them? <laughs> nah. Okay. Well, we're glad you come anyway. Amen. All right. Well, let's all stand together now, those that are able, as I read from the precious Word of God. What an exciting day this is. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's look at verse number 11. And verse number 11 of chapter 10 says, For the Scripture saith. Now, the Scriptures, of course, as you know, is the Word of God. Amen. So when God says it, it's settled. And there's no doubt about it that God says what He means. So here we have what the Bible says. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever. Now, who is He speaking there to? He's speaking to everybody. Whosoever. That means you, and that certainly means me. And I'm glad that it includes everybody. There's nobody that cannot be saved. There's nobody, no matter what you've done, no matter what's happened in your life, there's nobody that cannot come to Jesus. There's nobody that cannot be saved. There's nobody that cannot have their sins washed away. There's nobody that can not have their name written down in glory. So if you're whosoever here today, I want you to know that if you're not born again, if you're not saved, you could be saved here this morning. For the Bible says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth. That's simple, isn't it? I'm glad I didn't have to go to the cross and earn my salvation. I'm glad I didn't have to allow mere Roman soldiers to beat me near to death for me to earn my salvation. Somebody loved me so much that they were willing to go to that cross for me. And I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that the word believeth appears 248 times in the Bible? It's an important thing, but it's simple for us to do. What does it mean to believe? It means to accept. To accept is a truth. I'm here to tell you right now that I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. I believe it and I'm not ashamed of it for the Bible goes on to say, Whosoever believeth on him shall not, what church? Amen. Shall not, what church? Amen. Shall not, what church? Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, what a privilege you've given us to be here today. And already, Almighty God, you have stirred my soul Lord, I'm thankful for your presence, dear Heavenly Father, in my life and also around us as well. Lord, we're thankful for your word, which gives us so much encouragement, so much direction for our life, even corrects us as we need it, dear God. And Lord, we come before you, dear Heavenly Father, today, relying upon what the Scripture saith. And the Scripture saith, dear God, that whosoever believeth, and I'm glad that one day that included me, dear God. And I'm glad that today I believed in Jesus Christ. I believe He is your Son. I believe that He did come to the cross of Calvary. I believe He did die in agony and pain there for the sins that I had committed. And I'm glad today I'm saved. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody here this morning or in churches like this throughout the world, that if they're not saved, I pray that today that they'll open up their heart. And I pray that today they will believe on Him as their Lord and as their Savior. Lord, use me again this morning. Speak through me, dear God, the words you'd have me to say. And God, I'd be more than careful to give you all the praise and honor and the glory. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. You may be seated today and truly what a powerful verse of Scripture comes right out of the Word of God. It's right out of the Bible. It's as if though God was standing before you today and telling you these exact words. That's how powerful the Scriptures of God are. Is. And that's how much we can rely upon what the Bible says. It's easy. It's easy. Really, truly, it should be easy to tell whether or not you are saved. You ought to know whether or not you're saved, but you want to know something. I imagine that there's a lot of people here in this auditorium today that are not sure that they are saved. There's a lot of people today who are waiting to get to the pearly gates and hope that St. Peter somehow or another is going to allow them to enter in. But that's not how it works at all. You're either saved before you leave this world, and you're either heaven-bound before you get out of this world. 
or you're not going to heaven whatsoever. So today it's very important that we rely upon what God says, not what I say, not what anybody else says, but upon what the Word of God says today. And the Word of God clearly says, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now let me ask you a simple question here this morning. Are you ashamed to let people know that you are a believer? Are you ashamed to let people know that you go to church? Are you ashamed to let people know that you believe the Word of God? Are you ashamed today to, to let people know that you love Jesus? Are you ashamed today to let people know that you like to pray and you're going to pray for all things all the time? Are you ashamed to pray? Yes. Friends, I'm here to tell you right now that if you are truly saved today, let it be made known that you are not ashamed by standing up. If you're not ashamed, stand up today for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not ashamed today, raise your hand toward heaven. And if you're not ashamed today, let everybody around you hear you say, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. That sounded so good. Say it again. I am not ashamed. You may be seated. The scripture saith, the word of God proclaims it. That if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall not be ashamed. For the Bible tells us out of the book of Isaiah chapter number 50. The Bible says out of Isaiah chapter number 50 and verse number 7. It says, for the Lord God. Who's speaking here? The Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. What does the word confounded mean? It means to be confused. It, it, it means to uh, be ashamed. It means to doubt. Friends, I'm glad today, thank God, I don't have to doubt whether or not I'm saved. I don't have to be confused as to whether or not Jesus is going to keep his word when he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that he is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I'm glad I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to find out if I'm going to get to stay there. I'm glad I don't have to worry about winding up in hell, period. I'm not going to hell, period. I'm heaven bound, I'm telling you right now, because of Jesus Christ, the Son of God dying on the cross of Calvary. And here Isaiah is saying, shall not be confounded. A lot of people today are confused. They don't know how to be saved. A lot of people say, say that, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. I'm telling you, the Bible says it's not a works lest any man should boast. It's of grace, by grace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Therefore, have I set my face like a flint, and I know, I know that I shall not be ashamed. I'm glad today that I'm not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible goes on to say in the book of Philippians chapter 1, and in Philippians chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 40, the Bible says, according to my earnest expectations and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. I'm glad today that I don't have to be ashamed about anything that God does. I'm not ashamed to proclaim that God created this world in six days. I don't have to bow my head and think that, well, I come from monkeys. I'm not ashamed to say that God created man out of the dust of the earth. I'm not ashamed to say that God took a rib out of Adam and created woman. Woman means from man, not from monkeys. It means from man. I'm not ashamed to say that my God can part the Red Sea. I'm not ashamed to say that my God can send down manna from heaven. I'm not ashamed to say my God can raise the dead. I'm not ashamed of anything that my God does. I'm not ashamed to proclaim Jesus as my Savior. The Bible goes on to say that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all what, church? You know what we need today? We preach about this in the early worship service. We need to be bolder. We need to be bold in Christ. This world needs to hear about Jesus. This world needs to hear that there's still some who really believe that he is the I am, that he is the creator of all things, that he's coming back one of these days. I'm not ashamed of that. And I know he's coming back. One, I'm not ashamed to say one of these days, Lord willing, that there's going to be a rapture of the church. Amen. There's going to be a day, the Lord willing. The Lord Jesus Christ may take us up 
out of this old world and meet with him in the sky. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not ashamed, but with all boldness. We don't have to apologize. I'm not ashamed of anything that God does or says. And I don't have to apologize to anybody. I don't care who knows I go to church. I don't care who knows I pray. I don't care who knows I read my Bible. I don't care who knows I believe in Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm not ashamed. Are you ashamed today? Well, the Bible says, but for that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be what, church? Magnified. Have you magnified Christ this week at all? If you did, how did you do so? In what ways did you magnify Christ? In other words, bring him to the forefront. In what ways did you make him bigger than life? Because he is bigger than life. What ways did you do? By being bold. By being not ashamed. How many of you went down Walmart and out there preached about Jesus? How many went through food line and sung Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me? How many of you bowed your head at work and were not ashamed to pray? How many of you pulled out your Bibles and read a verse or two of Scripture during your break time? You didn't care what anybody else thought. You didn't care what anybody else cared. You weren't ashamed. You weren't ashamed of nothing that God has. And you're not ashamed to let people know that you're one of his. Amen. Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or even by death. You know, there's people right now that are in prison because they say, I'm not ashamed. There's Pastor Saeed there in Iraq, been in prison now for several years. The only reason he's in prison is because he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's been in prison and tormented and tortured, but he's not ashamed of Jesus. He's not recounting, recanting. He's not saying, well, I made a mistake. He's not saying, well, I should have known better. He's saying, I still believe in Jesus Christ. I still believe that he's my Lord. I still believe that he's my Savior, whether I'm in prison or whether I'm out of prison. What about you? What about me? Do we act like we're ashamed of Jesus? Do we act like we're ashamed of Jesus at work? We don't want nobody to know at work that we went to church today. When they're in there talking about all the hoot nanny and all the things they've done this weekend, you kind of sit there and kind of just get real quiet. You let them have their day. You let them tell about all these things that they got into, all this riffraff and all this stuff that they've done on Saturday night and on Friday night. Couldn't see straight on Sunday. You listen to all that stuff, but you didn't take a stand at all. You was ashamed. When they asked you what you did Sunday, what did you do this weekend? Was you ashamed to tell him? Well, I went to church. <laughs> well, I was pretty busy this weekend. I didn't really get to get out and do much this weekend. I'm telling you right now, if you don't do anything all week long, if you go to church on a Sunday morning and praise him, worship him, and glorify him, you've done more than anybody that's gone and done anything else the whole week. I'm not ashamed, magnified in my body, whether it be by life or whether it be by death. Friends, don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ because there's coming a day you're going to have to stand before him. Coming a day you're going to have to stand before Jesus. Look at what John says in the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 28. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 28, the Bible says, And now little children abide in me, that when he shall appear, one of these days, one way or another, I'm going to see Jesus. One of these days, he's going to sound the trumpet of God and shout from glory, and everybody that's saved, been born again, is going to leave this world, and the Bible says we're going to meet him in the air. I'm looking forward. I hope that's us. I hope it's us. But even if it's not us, one of these days, I'm still going to stand before him. And when I stand before him, I don't want to be ashamed, and I don't want him to be ashamed of me. That's what the Bible's talking about there in 1 John chapter 2. It says, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. As there's been times you've been ashamed of him here on earth, and there's going to be times when he's going to stand before you, and he'll say, I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of the way you've acted. I'm ashamed of the things you did. I'm ashamed of the things you thought, the things you said. I'm ashamed of you because you acted like you didn't even know me. 
You know, every time we sin, we act as if though we don't know him. Are you ashamed of Jesus this morning? I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ this morning. Friends, and the Bible tells us here that there's a way why we should be ashamed. <laughs> well, how can we keep from being ashamed of Jesus? Well, I want to tell you something that happened to me when I got saved 37 years ago. It happened that when I got saved 37 years ago that God changed my life. Now, I want to tell you something. If God hadn't changed your life, if you're the same old person that you've always been, you better check up and see whether or not you've really been born again. Born again really means that you've been through a stage of metamorphosis that you went in an old squiggly worm and you come out a butterfly. Well, when I got saved, I was just an old wretched sinner. But when I got saved, I want to tell you something. I come out a whole lot different. I'm not perfect by no means, but I want to tell you something. God changed my life. And I'm not ashamed of God being able to do something for me that I couldn't have done for myself. There was many a times I tried to walk away from this type of sin or that type of sin. I couldn't do it in my own power. But I'm telling you, when that day come, when Jesus Christ come into my heart, come into my life, Jesus Christ changed my life. Has there been a drastic change in your life? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So here we find that there's two simple ways to find out for sure as to whether or not you're really saved. Number one is, if you are ashamed of Jesus, you're not saved. For the Bible says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Didn't say, will not at times be ashamed. Didn't say on occasion will not be ashamed. It says you will not be ashamed. Another way you can tell for sure whether or not you are saved is that there's been a transformation in your life. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. You've been given a second chance at life. Amen. You've been born again. When I look at a passage of scriptures here and I see that in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8, something marvelous happened 37 years ago when I got saved. 37 years ago, I got saved, and when you got saved, truly saved, truly born again, the same thing happened to you. The Bible says, but you shall receive power. <laughs> Whew. How much power you got on you? If you ain't got no power on you, then it's because you ain't saved. Because the Bible clearly says there was something that happened when you got saved. All things passed away, all things become new. But there's something else that happened when you got saved. The Bible says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and into the other most parts of the earth. I want to ask you something. How, what kind of a witness are you? Don't you have the power of God on you? The Bible says that when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you and the Holy Spirit of God comes upon every born again believer. You believe that? What, know you not that your body is the temple of God? The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, comes upon every believer. And when God's Spirit comes upon every believer, God empowers that believer. God gives that a believer an unusual ability to do what? To be a witness. To be a witness for who? Jesus. Let me ask you something. Who would you witness to this past week? Last week, two weeks ago. When's the last time that you boldly proclaimed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And I hope that it's more often than just right here in the church. But sad to say, in a lot of cases, people even in the church are ashamed of Jesus. What will people think if I raise my hand? What will people think if I say amen? What will people say if I act like I enjoy being in church today? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness for him? Friend, Paul had a great boldness. And you want to know one of the reasons he had a great boldness we found out in early worship this morning is because he asked the church at Ephesus to pray for him. 
that he be given utterance, that he be given boldness. You know what the church of Jesus Christ needs today is boldness. Boldness to bear witness of Jesus Christ. For Paul says in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse number 29, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. You stand up for the Lord, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be an easy road. But the Paul said, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. We need boldness again in the church. People that are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I want to tell you in verse number 16 of Romans chapter 1, there's a strong message there. And that strong message is empowered by God. What is this strong message that is empowered by God? It is the message of salvation. And the message of salvation needs to be proclaimed throughout the world. A lot of churches have abandoned the thought that people really truly need to be born again. People have abandoned the thought, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they turn to prosperity, and they turn to psychology, and they turn to all these other kinds of things when they better get people saved first. Then they can get their life straightened out. But there's a powerful message in Romans chapter 1, 16, and it is the power of God to preach about salvation to everyone that believeth. I like what, Bible, what the Bible says in Romans chapter 9, verse 33. The Bible says in chapter 9, verse 33, I'm not ashamed. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling a stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him, here it is again, shall not be ashamed. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus at the restaurant? You won't pray? Are you ashamed of Jesus at the workplace? At school? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus when you get together with your family? Are you ashamed of Jesus? The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 8, in Mark 8 and 38, the Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I'm not ashamed this morning to speak about him in public. Amen. How many here today will go out and take this challenge? Somehow, somewhere or another, I'm going to speak about Jesus in the public. How many is going to accept that challenge this morning? I'm going to speak about Jesus somewhere, somehow. It might be at Walmart. It might be at Food Line. It might be at Lowe's. It might be at a ball game. It might be walking down the street. It might be at Ryan's. It might be wherever. I'm going to speak about Jesus. I'm not ashamed to speak about Jesus in public. And I'm not ashamed to pray. Amen. I'm not ashamed to pray. I don't have to be ashamed when God says this is something we ought to do. I'm not ashamed to shout. What about the rest of you? Are any of you ashamed to shout? Are you ashamed to praise Him? Are you ashamed to worship Him? I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. We have some that are coming this morning who are professing that they're not ashamed. They're not ashamed to commit their life to Jesus. They're not ashamed to stand before you witnesses this morning and proclaim that they believe Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. They're not ashamed to tell you that they believe that Jesus Christ was buried. They're not ashamed to tell you that they believe that Jesus Christ overcome the grave, overcome death, hell. He overcome it. Jesus Christ is alive today. They're not ashamed. I don't have to apologize for that. My God's alive. Jesus is alive. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Friends, I'm not ashamed to share the word of God. I'm not ashamed to praise God. I'm not ashamed of the things of God. And people that are coming this morning to be baptized or proclaiming that they're not ashamed to proclaim that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Now, how are they going to show that they're not ashamed this morning when they come to be baptized in just a few moments? First of all, they're going to enter into the water. In a few moments, I'm going to submerge them in the water. The word baptize literally means to put under. That's the Greek meaning of baptism. The Greek meaning of baptizing is to put under or to bury. That's exactly what I'm going to do here in just a few moments. 
I'm going to bury some people. And when I bury them in the water, I'm going to put them under. They're signifying that they believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. How are they going to signify that Jesus Christ died on the cross by me putting them under water? Because for a few moments, they're going to cease to breathe. For a few moments, a couple of seconds at most, I will take a cloth and I will place it over their nose and I will place it over their mouth. I know a lot of people think, well, that's to keep water from going up their nose and so forth and so on. Well, it might serve that purpose, but it's symbolic of burial cloth. And I'm going to place that burial cloth on some people's faces this morning. And for a few seconds, they're going to cease to breathe. Symbolizing death. The death of Jesus Christ. The death of their old life. And then I'm going to bury them. And when I put them under the water, they're going to signify and they're going to shout. They're going to say to everybody here in this service today, I believe that not only did Jesus Christ die on the cross, but I believe that they took his body off of that cross and I believe they buried his body in a tomb. And I'm going to put you in a tomb this morning. I'm going to put you under. I'm going to cover you up. And everybody here is going to bear witness. They believe. A lot of people get baptized. They don't even know what it's about. Especially younger children, they get baptized and they don't have a clue. They just go through the motions up. They don't understand it. I like what Brandon said this morning on the phone. He'd been baptized previously. I've been baptized previously before I really was saved. He said, I think his grandfather or grandmother told him, he said, well, you got dunked the first time. <clears throat> but now you're going to be baptized. So there's a difference between being dunked, just going through a traditional formality, than to really understand what it's all about. And so this morning when I bury these, I'm also going to bring them back up. They're showing that they believe that, yes, Jesus Christ died on the cross. They're showing that they believe that he was buried. But they are also going to show that they believe that Jesus Christ arose from the grave. And when they come up out of that water, we'll bear witness with God. Because God will be watching. We'll bear witness with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ will be watching because Jesus Christ instructed us to follow him in scriptural baptism. Not to be ashamed of him. And when they come up out of that water, the Holy Spirit of God will also be watching. And it's a wonderful moment. You can remember when you were baptized. And you remember exactly what it was like when you understood the symbolic meaning of being baptized. it will be a moment that you'll never forget those who are being baptized today. We've got the wonderful privilege of being able to bear witness. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ, that they have been born again, that they are not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Let's stand to our feet, and those that are going to be baptized, if you will, make your way back to the baptistry. Make your preparations there. But also during this time of invitation, if God's speaking to your heart, maybe today you've never been born again, you know, you know that you've never been born again. Maybe you're sitting around hoping. Maybe you're sitting around thinking that, well, possibly. Maybe you're thinking, well, when I get up there to heaven, maybe St. Peter's going to let me in. I'm going to tell you, you're not even going to run into St. Peter at the gate. <clears throat> you're either going to go in or you're not even going to heaven at all. Are you really born again here this morning? Have you really been saved? Have you really been saved? Have you by faith trusted Jesus Christ as the Son of God? You can today. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You could be born again right here. You could be given a second chance of life. Your name could be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You could be assured of going to heaven, but you can also be assured of having the Holy Spirit of God with you right here in the remaining days that you're here on earth. What a blessing. What a wonderful thing it is to be saved. Wonderful thing. Wonderful sight. Challenging for sure. If you've never been saved, would you come? Maybe today you've been ashamed of Jesus somewhere along the line. Maybe there's been a place, been a time that God's pointed out in your heart. Why were you ashamed of me? Why were you ashamed of me? Or is there any here today that have been ashamed for whatever reason? Why don't you come forward?
If there's anybody here today that needs to step forward for whatever reason, would you come? I'm not ashamed of Jesus. And I don't care who knows that he's my Savior. I'm not ashamed to tell people I know he died on the cross, but I'm not ashamed to tell people he arose from the grave either. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? While these are still playing and we're still praying, I'm going to slip out and we'll get into the baptistry here in a moment. God bless you. You may be seated. her Savior. She comes this morning to present herself as a candidate for baptism. Deborah, with all your heart, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. That he died on the cross at Calvary for your sins? Yes. That he has forgiven you of all your sins and saved your soul? Yes, sir. Amen. Deborah, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize thee. Buried in baptism, rise to walk. So exciting. Woo. I don't know how it feels out there, but I'm telling you up here, I can't hardly stand. testimony concerning uh, several months ago, wasn't it, Brandon? <clears throat> he was out plowing, I believe it was. Bush hogging. Bush hogging. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord began to speak to him. And out there while he was bush hogging, I believe he stopped the tractor, didn't he? I believe he'd come in and who did you call your grandmother? Or? I sure did. Is your grandmother out there? Yep, right out there. 
Harry, our grandmother and grandfather out there. Amen. Stand up, Grandma, Grandpa. Amen. Amen. I know you're proud of you. They're also missionaries. Is that right, Brandon? They go around and help build churches. What a wonderful mission that they do. But Brandon, with all your heart today, do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. You believe he died on that cross of Calvary? Yes, sir. You believe he rose from the grave? Yes. And you believe he's now saved your soul? Yes, sir. Amen. Brandon, yes. in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize thee. Buried in baptism. Rise to walk. Savior. Is that right, Mackenzie? Amen. So, Mackenzie, this morning, with all your heart, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You believe that he did die on the cross of Calvary for our sins? You believe he arose from the grave with the power that he has? You believe he has saved your soul and forgiven you of all your sins? Amen. Mackenzie, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize thee, buried in baptism. Rise to walk. himself as a candidate to follow Jesus Christ in scriptural baptism. Tyler, with all your heart, you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. You believe that on the cross of Calvary he died for our sins? Yes, sir. You believe that he arose from the dead? Yes, sir. You believe that when you asked him to forgive you of your sins and save your soul, he did exactly that? Yes, sir. Amen. Tyler, Amen. you want to step this way? Tyler, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize thee very in baptism. Rise to walk in a new way of life. service here already today, and God is blessed in a great and mighty way. I want to encourage you to come back tonight as we continue looking to the Word of God. Lord willing, we're going to be speaking about, has God ever said no to you? Has God ever told you, no, I'm not going to do that? Amen, Brother Bob. Well, after service, okay, all the veterans for about five minutes, let's meet with Bob, all right? Let's stand to our feet, let's bow our heads and be dismissed in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, what a glorious day you've given us here. We're thankful for your presence. We're thankful for your Son, the Holy Spirit as well. Thankful for your word which gives us such instructions for our life. I'm glad today I'm heaven bound, dear God, because of Jesus. And I pray that, Heavenly Father, if there's any here today that for some reason or other didn't step forward, I pray that, God, you'll continue to reach out to them before it's too late for them to be saved. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen.